This Ramadan, we are on the road and visiting the major cities in the UK until the end of Ramadan. We have been touring some of the biggest and best masjids, as well as reaching out to Britain's 3.1 million Muslims to see how they spend their Ramadan. Today, we are in Glasgow, home of the River Clyde and housing one of Europe's largest civic art collections. We will be visiting Glasgow Central Mosque. We were lucky enough to get an exclusive tour around the masjid. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, welcome to Glasgow Central Mosque. My name is Nafis Ahmed and I'll be showing you around the mosque today and going uh, over some of the things that happen in the mosque. And um, right now we're in the entrance area and behind me is the base of the minaret and you would have seen uh, our beautiful minaret that we have in here. So first of all, we're going to, I'm going to take you into the main prayer hall and show you what happens in the main prayer hall. So follow me this way. So this is the main prayer hall. Glasgow Centre Mosque was built almost 34 years ago in 1984. It was the first purpose-built mosque in Scotland and to this day is the largest mosque in Scotland. In this prayer hall we can hold approximately 2,000 um, people. We've got a balcony area with the ladies are, you can get another 600, almost uh, 600 females there and we've got an overflow area in the basement as well uh, where we can get another three or four hundred. So it showed the foresight that Allah had blessed with the, founder, the founders with uh, because uh, they had the foresight to foresee that there would be so many people and there would be such a demand because at the time there wasn't that many Muslims in Scotland, in Glasgow um, and people were opposing the building of a masjid that was so big uh, because they didn't, said it was unjustified but Alhamdulillah, we have a masjid and it's serving the needs till this day. In this main hall, we've just had a refurbishment uh, program that we've undertaken. So we've got a new carpet, it's, it's been custom designed and custom made in Turkey. And we've also got the new uh, mihrab, uh, which has got the LED lighting behind it and it's got the custom grill design as well. Also, part of the recent refurbishment was the replacement of all the lighting with high efficiency LED lights, which has resulted in a saving of 80%. The Glasgow Centre Mosque, it, it serves a wide uh, and diverse community now. Um, so we've got Muslim brothers from all over the world coming here and uh, you know taking part in all the prayers. Uh, so some of the busiest times is like now we've got Ramadan, we've got the Taravi prayer and we've got you know four or five hundred brothers coming for the Taravi prayer plus um, each night and it's particularly busy on Juma where we almost get full and then as you know in Ramadan on the 27th night it's, it's a really busy night and we have to ha we have overflow into the car park and have carpets in the car park as well. So we're now in the basement like I said upstairs this is the overflow area when we have busy time for Juma or on the 27th night we can get extra prayers in here the other purpose of this area is that for the maktab classes during the weekday. So we have all the children come here learning Quran. We have almost 400 children come here every day, Monday to Friday. Uh, we have Quran classes, we have Islamic studies. Uh, there's uh, young children doing hifiz of the Quran, Alhamdulillah. And we also offer some alim classes as well. So the children are studying Arabic, they're studying Hadith and they're studying the Quran. Alhamdulillah, this is a great facility that we offer to the community of Glasgow. So we're now in the small community hall. Uh, in the small community hall we've got a number of areas. Right now we're in the sort of general purpose dining area. We've got a kitchen. Uh, it's just like a chill out area for people. Um, if we come through here, we've got the daycare, elderly daycare centre. So during the week, the elderly uh, population, people, the elderly people, they come in and they have sessions with different people and they have a lunch. Um, so this is where they get to relax and, and do different activities. Um, and then through here we've got the actual hall itself. So this is the hall 
Uh, in here we do various activities, we've had workshops, first aid workshops, we've had uh, bicycle maintenance workshops, um, blood drives in here. Um, we use this hall when we have open days uh, and we do presentations. We also have the Hajj training course, so the Muslims uh, from Glasgow who want to go on Hajj, they can come in here and we host a Hajj training program for them and they spend a day here, or last time we did it over two days, uh, where they were taught all the basics and aspects of Hajj and they got taught in here. So now we're in the library. We, we use the library for multiple purposes. We've obviously got all the Islamic books that Imams can refer to. Uh, we have our kind of committee meetings in here and other general purpose meetings. We've got our marriage service. We also have in the mosque, we have a funeral service, uh, which is quite extensive. Uh, we have a, a dedicated mortuary and one of the other services we have, you know, marriage and counselling services that are offered from the mosque as well. So this is our main community hall. Right now, uh, we're getting preparations for the iftar meal underway. We're into the middle of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, it's going really well so far. Uh, and the brothers are preparing for the iftar. We've got the volunteers in the kitchen. They're preparing the meal. Uh, we've got the dastakhans laid out. Um, and shortly, there'll be about four to 500 people uh, coming here to open their fast with us. Uh, the other things that we use this hall for is to hire out for weddings and other kind of large conferences and functions. The opportunities that Allah has given us in the month of Ramadan were not given in any month else except maybe the month of the Hijjah. But this is the mercy of Allah is keep giving us uh, certain times with certain rare opportunities. So let us make use of these opportunities that Allah has granted us in the month of Ramadan. Look, the Prophet وسلم, said, whoever fasts the month of Ramadan out of belief, believing in Allah and believing that Allah commanded him to fast, seeking the reward of Allah, he will have all his previous sins forgiven. If you miss that opportunity, don't miss the second opportunity. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the one who observes Qiyamul Layl during the month of Ramadan, Allah Jalla wa Ala will wipe all his previous sins. If you miss that opportunity, don't miss the last opportunity. What is it? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the one who observes Qiyamul Layl in the night of Qadr, just one night in the last 10 nights, out of Iman, believing in Allah Jalla wa Ala and believe that Allah Jalla wa Ala legislated that and seeking the reward of that Qiyamul Layl, he will have all his previous sins forgiven. Don't lose these great opportunities, my dear brothers and sisters. Abu Huraira narrated, the messenger of Allah would encourage the night prayer in Ramadan without firmly ordering it. And he would say, whoever stands in the night prayer for Ramadan with faith and seeking the reward from Allah, then he will be forgiven what has preceded of his sins. So the messenger of Allah died and the matter was like that. Then the matter was the same during the Khilafah of Abu Bakr and it continued during a portion of the Khilafah of Umar bin Al-Khattab. Now, let's head over to the car park where the mosque committee and volunteers handed out donations to families that are affected by poverty. ما أحلك يا رمضان أنا دايما بستنى على قلبي ما أغلى يا رب لنا طول ريحة طلة رمضان رمضان ده حياتي شمع لمماتي يا رب دعاتي تقبلها طول رمضان ده رحمة من ربنا نعمة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد Initially we can begin with the topic of resisting the desire to eat and drink and this is 
something which affects everybody, non-Muslims and Muslims alike. In fact, it's so important that it's on the agenda in terms of health and obesity, healthy eating. It's something which affects all people and young people. The whole idea of fasting too is all the rage these days. Um, because of health issues, people are wanting to eat healthily. We have now an increasing movement about time-restricted eating, in which the idea is that you eat within a restricted time frame of 10 to 9 to 12 hours and uh, the uh, health benefits because of this, because you are resting your liver and your digestive system. Then we have uh, dry fasts and fasts in which there's just drinking liquids. And these are approaches to health which are medically proven. There's more and more research coming into the forefront. When a person goes hungry for a period of time, what happens is that the digestive system, the liver, uh, everything is rested and um, the consequence of this is that the enzymes which would normally break down food begin to break down the toxins in the bloodstream um, and the benefits of this are well documented. So there are many non-Muslims who are writing about this subject and speaking about it purely from a health perspective. In fact now, although you would think that working out on an empty stomach in a fasting state is unhealthy, there's a move towards this as well because of the hormones which are released when a person has been in a fasting state for a number of hours. So from an Islamic perspective too, sumu tasihu, one of the benefits of fasting is good health. Most of our illnesses are because of the way that we eat and the amount that we eat. But if we go further than this, the spiritual benefits are because of the fact that a person who cannot even resist the temptation to, from, from, from putting a morsel into their mouth, which is going to cause them harm and they know this. We have, for example, a person who is obese, who's suffering from extra weight, who, has, who is a diabetic, who has a heart problem, and they know, or gently, just dental health. We know that we are sh to avoid this particular food substance because it could cause us harm, but we continue. Now, if we take this analogy further, uh, if you take the example of food, a person who cannot even control their own drive to put a morsel into their food or desist from the desire may well find that they have a weakness of willpower when it comes to other decision making which might relate to other human beings, which might relate to their sexual activity. So in Islam, of the benefits of fasting, in addition to the physical benefits of health, it's about the ability to restrict oneself's movement and mind over matter. It's the idea of being able to make a, an active decision and to be in the driving seat when it comes to your own life and what you do with yourself. Um, so if we begin to explore this, the, the meaning of taqwa becomes very clear. The ability to restrict oneself from activities which are harmful in the dunya, in this world, in the afterlife, in the hereafter. And so this is a, a, a foundation. Saum, which is imsak, it's desisting, it's the translation of the word som. It means to desist, we call it fasting, but because this is a generic term which we all understand, but it means desisting, it means holding back. A person who learns to fast can learn to fast in a much broader sense. There are many things which we fast from all our lives, or we should do. Uh, we avoid certain things, or we should, uh, as human beings, as Muslims. Uh, the Anbiya Ali Musalam never break their fast. They don't commit those sins. We break our fasts in the dunya and as a consequence our Akhirah is compromised. So the simple message here uh, for myself and for my listeners is that the purpose of fasting should always be kept in focus and we can enhance this experience by ensuring that we use the last 10 days in I'tikaf, the Sunnah of Rasulullah so we're in the right place at the right time so that we happen to be in the Masjid, in Ibadah when the night of Qadr happens when it comes, when it occurs. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this a month of forgiveness for us all and a month of progression in our deen. Wa akhiru da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. With Maghrib approaching, we decided to head down to the main community hall to share iftar with the locals. Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar
الكبار أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول حيا نصر حيا نصر حيا للفنان حيا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله روح تلألئ في السماء تجلل الرحمن وتعظم المولى القدير وتعبد المنان وتحفز النفس الكريمة تبتغي الجنات بحلول شهر الصوم والرحمات والرضوان روح تلألئ في السماء تجلل الرحمن وتعظم المولى القدير وتعبد المنان وتحفز النفس الكريمة تبتغي الجنات بحلول شهر الصوم والرحمات والرضوان وبصومها وصلاتها تزداد بالحسنات وتصدق في سرها وتلاوه الحمد لله الحمد لله very well very well we trying to make the most of it you know alhamdulillah it's been, it's been quite, going quite well we come to the mosque reading quran attending tarawih having iftar you know everything that comes with ramadan alhamdulillah my ramadan's been going really well um, obviously not as great as it should be but overall i'd say i'm relatively happy May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept everything that we're doing. There's a lot of shortcomings in this month on my behalf, but I'm hoping in the remainder of the month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives me the strength to ensure that I do as I should. Alhamdulillah, uh, my Ramadan, Allah has been very merciful since being, I am a diabetic, but Alhamdulillah, I've been coping very well indeed. Um, and I'm very lucky, I think. Uh, last year I missed it due to my illness, but this year, Alhamdulillah, so far I've been very strong. It's, uh, with the help of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, I've been coping very well. Alhamdulillah, uh, my Ramadan has been very good. Uh, could always be better, but Alhamdulillah, um, uh, the goals I've set, Alhamdulillah, seem to be achieving them. Allah, Alhamdulillah, Ramadan, like you know, I, I get it ready before, so uh, I started like. Uh, Wake up in the morning, pray a fajr, after that go to college, and then when I finish, I get back home, take a rest for, and take a nap, like one, two hours, and then I start to read Quran. And when the time for uh, breakfast, I come here before to the mosque, I read a little of Quran, and then I breakfast with other people in the same. Memorize at least half of uh, the last 30 swara, 
Uh, like a lot of uh, Muslims, uh, you know, we, we only know the last 10 surahs. You know, that's the thing we get taught. Then after that, we drift away from Quran quite a lot. So, uh, inshallah, I'm going to do itikaf this year. So, I'm planning on memorizing at least half of the 30th parah personally. To do a wee bit more talabit. Work more, do more of tar, like everybody else, do more, do more about that, to get more swab, to make, uh, you know, that, to get more for our sale. For Akira. Allah, all I'm asking God to, to be forgiven uh, for this year and asking for things I need and uh, to get better life and everything. Hopefully that I'll be more helpful to fellow human beings. That's the sole purpose. And I try my best, inshallah, that I help whatever way I can uh, to ease the suffering of uh, our brothers and sisters and human beings as a whole. Having goals in Ramadan is extremely important. If nothing is your target, you'll hit it every single time. What does that mean? That you'll accomplish absolutely nothing if you don't set yourself goals and targets. So it's really important that you set yourself weekly goals, Ashura goals, daily goals, and even monthly goals. So every single day you answer what you have done and if you've reached that target. If a couple of times have done it at the mosque, uh, that's been quite good because you're in the environment of the masjid and as soon as you break your fast it's, 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 there's, there's, no, there's no messing around, you don't have, you don't sit about for 20-30 minutes having food and then read Maghrib is literally put the kajur in your mouth, drink some water, do wuzu if you need to and go straight to namaz so that, you know, it's, it's like the core, it's like the basics uh, it's going back to basics, you come to you come to the mosque uh, for, you know, for that kind of feeling. General vibes inside this mosque are very welcoming. I take tours regularly for non-Muslims, showing them our masjid, showing us the things that we do inside this mosque. So they are very positive. Obviously every institute could be slightly better, but alhamdulillah overall this institute does quite a lot of good outreach work and community work as well. I've been volunteering in this masjid for a good few years. Um, it's a good ambience, uh, mashallah the brothers that are on the committee, they're very very good. Uh, they're providing a good uh, service to the, to the community. <laughs> my favourite place, I heard this quite a, quite a few times, uh, is actually my home. Uh, it's just childhood memories, you know, uh, since I was young, since I was, uh, you know, uh, since it was obligatory to, to fast in Ramadan. For me, I've just been doing it at home most of the time, so it's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of nostalgia related to, you know, star you want to do at home, pakore, samosa, all that, you know, bad food that you're supposed to stay away from, but you can't in uh, Ramadan, so I've just, the best place would be my home. Definitely, definitely in mosque, yeah, because uh, uh, we feel better in the mosque. Uh, doing a star with all of other brothers from all over around the world and from different countries so feel much better to do a star with them instead of home. It doesn't matter where I am, I've been at a various different places on different days and different nights. It's irrelevant, you know, it's, I don't really uh, say, you know, this is my... I, I really have, like to have a star with my family. I prefer that, you know, but if I'm out and about, then inshallah, alhamdulillah, every place is uh, favored, yes, every place is liked, and I'm very grateful for that. If you want my honest opinion, my favorite place is the last 10 days of Ramadan inside the masjid on Ittikaf, serving people, serving other people when they're really hungry, and you seeing their smiles when they're filling their sort of stomachs is the most blissful thing one could ever imagine. We had a great time in Glasgow, and now we are off to Edinburgh. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum. Oh Allah, on this day, let me have mercy on the orphans, and feed the hungry, and spread peace, and keep company with the noble-minded, O oh, the shelter of the hopeful.